Joining us right now is uh, Scott Sober. He is the um, president and CEO of Berkeley Veritronic Systems. Good morning, Scott. Hey, good morning. Thanks right. for having me on. Thanks for being here. What uh, what exactly are, are Berkeley Veritronic Systems? What do you guys do? We're a design and manufacture company. We're 38 years old, a family-owned business, and we're a privately held company. And what we do is You focus- guys look super for your age. I mean, really, oh, you do not look 38. <laughs> I am not 38. The company was founded by my father 38 years ago. He's our CTO, and I'm the next generation, so a little bit younger. Okay. All right. Uh, And what we do is we we focus in on uh, niche designs. A lot of the stuff that we've designed and developed over the years is wireless technology test equipment to build out the cellular work, which make our phones work. Uh, Certainly our our 3G phones, as you hear about in all the commercials, now the the 4G, the fourth generation with the high-speed uh, networks that are being built out, the companies such as Verizon and AT&T use our equipment to build out these high-speed networks to make our phones work and receive video and load all these cool things in apps. Okay, so like what, what just uh, I'm, I'm a little slow. Tell, tell me a little bit more in detail. What are, sure. you, what are you doing exactly? Yeah, we're designing <laughs> and, and manufacturing the test equipment. So in other words, these are signal strength receivers and test transmitters. Who, who uses this? All the carriers. If you imagine a carrier that, that, that runs the network, a Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, they need to locate the tower. Where's the best spot to put the tower, align the antennas, measure for interference so they could build out the network efficiently. And they obviously want to maximize their customers and their revenue, so they want to spread these towers out as best they can. Okay, and, and why are we talking to you right now? Uh, because we've got some innovative design products that we came out with. The offshoots of all of this development is what we've designed in cell phone detection tools. These are small, handheld, and covert tools that are keeping America safe. So a spin-off of this, the problem is, in prisons, a lot of people are smuggling in cell phones, which is a huge, huge problem to orchestrate all kinds of gang activity, witness intimidation, all of these things. And we're combating this problem by applying this technology to find these unauthorized cell phones. So it's kind of the opposite of the tools we've developed for the carriers so they can go hunt down the, these phones, as well as the, the federal government facilities. They're using these uh, cell phone tools to find these phones that are smuggled in, snuck in to steal and compromise security, things of that sort. So we enforce a no cell phone policy with our handheld tools. Can you, can you introduce this to, say, movie theaters? Sure. That yeah, would be great. Point. We could just yeah. take those right out of there, just get rid of all those uh, cell phones in movie yeah. theaters? Courts, uh-huh. movie theaters. Uh-huh. Some people have said churches, uh-huh. uh, airplanes. They always say turn your, turn your phones off. Anywhere where they do not want cell phones but, but, but to be you're, you're, you're saying to detect the phone or to cut the signal off? No, you're not legally allowed to, to cut the signal off. That's, that's jamming or suppressing the signal. Uh-huh. But what we are allowed to do is detect it. So if your phone is making a call, if somebody's texting, surfing the Internet... Or if your phone is in the standby mode, a lot of people refer to it, which 90% of everybody has their phone on, but they're not actively talking. It will talk out to the tower every so often. Autonomous registration is what it's called. And we can detect that signal as well. And, so we and, then, then, you, and then you send in a, a bunch of uh, Berkeley Veritronic Systems uh, we, Rangers to go and get those phones? Right. That's when you team. send the bulldog in to take care of them. All right, so they go and they say, no, you have a phone. <laughs> yep. yep, all you do is ask, pal. You didn't have to spend all this money on this. Yeah, and when it's something such as correctional facility, if they actually catch them on a phone, they'll add several years to their sentence. Ah. They'll impose fines. Actually, Uh, yeah, no, no, I I know that. Actually, we have a call coming in right now. This gentleman is calling from prison on his phone. (laughs) Uh, Joe, you're in prison right now, and you're calling on your prison phone? Yeah, man, I I only got five minutes, man, because I got, you know, I'm I'm, I'm doing my time here. What's up? Now, I was curious. I I know the answer is probably no, but is there any way to detect a uh, phone that's cut off when you lose it? You mean if the phone is actually shut off? Correct. Yes, there is ways of of, uh, finding phones like that. But they're not, they're not, uh, uh, the main companies don't have them at this point, do they? Uh, no, there is technology out there to, to, to find phones if it's cut off. If you're hiding your phone under the mattress, 
You're hiding it in the brick wall. Dude, I don't know where I hid it. I wasn't trying to hide it. <laughs> you're not, you're not supposed to have a phone in I, prison. I, I, so. I was just like trying to throw $200 away. <laughs> <laughs> we will find you and you will be caught, so don't don't use a phone in prison. Well, he is right okay. now. All right, all right Joe. All right. Thanks yeah, for coming, man. Say hello to all the fellas. See you. All right, bye. Yeah. There's a call live from prison right there. That's scary. Oh. Well, I think they're allowed to use them there. No. <laughs> They're not? They're not. He calls us no. all the time. No, inmates I, are not allowed to use phones. Well, I've been in many, many facilities, and it's, you do? it's a big problem. What would you do, Ron? Oh, oh, you've been in many facilities. Yeah, no, checking this them out. is just when they asked us to come in and, and uh, demonstrate the technology. So we've been to in some... So how many do you find? Oh, I, I don't personally find them, but our customers, the correctional officers, the IT staff in the correction facilities, they right. find tons of them, and they find them in the interesting places, you name it, uh... Inside electrical apparatuses, mm -hmm. they'll hollow out bricks. They'll hide them up in light fixtures. Anywhere you can even imagine. Well, maybe you could maybe you could help Joe find his because it sounds yeah. like it was a two hundred dollars phone that he lost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he actually lost it. I think he was yeah. trying to say, "Can they find him?" Is what his question was. Well, maybe that's what it was. He takes a battery out yeah. and he's hiding it. So that, yes, they can eventually they, find they it. They can. Wow. Yeah, with different it's... technology. Yep. Huh? It actually, I won't get into all the details of it, because if they know, then they'll keep hiding them. <laughs> we'll get into a little details. Uh, like, when, like for instance, all right, I, can you use this for, like, I lost my phone? I'm not in prison. I lost my phone. Can you find my phone for me? Uh, technically, yes, you, you, you could if you're patient and wait till your phone registers. Uh, it's similar to, to we, we've sold to some of the different groups within the government or the things that happened back on 9-11 where uh, the towers went down. Right. If you envision piles of rubble and people are buried with their phone on them, but maybe they can't activate it because their arms are pinned or whatever the case may be, you, you still can search with a, a, the unit or Wolfhound Pro coupled with a direction-finding antenna waiting for the phone to ping to the base station and say, guys, go, go bury, uh, you know, there's a body buried here, a phone with it. Start digging. Try to try to uncover it. Or you or, can just listen for people playing Angry Birds underneath you, that You could rubble. do that, too. That <laughs> would be my son. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty interesting technology. I mean, that, that's, that is pretty amazing. Yeah, but, it, but it is, it's becoming a, a, uh, a problem that's getting out of proportion now. What we've done is taken it to the next step. Obviously, if you're walking through a, a correction facility looking for phones with a tool, once they catch on, eventually they're going to hide it and they won't make calls when you're, when you're walking around or... They'll, they'll go low-key. So we've introduced is a series of covert tools where we actually embed the cell phone technology into everyday common items, uh, such as we have a water bottle, we have a book, uh, a power strip, uh, different apparatus that perhaps a correctional officer might carry or wear. We can embed it so, th so the inmates have absolutely no idea that they're being monitored, and that's becoming more and more powerful. Wow. Joe, watch out for anybody with a water bottle. That's right. <laughs> right. Well, That's Scott, you you, you've uh, you've opened our eyes to something new. I had no idea, Scott. No uh, Thanks Schober. for having me on there. And uh, and and that's Berkeley. What is the what's the website? Sure. If, Our if, company is Berkeley Varitronic Systems. We're out of Metuchen, New Jersey, and the website is www. B is in boy, V is in Victor, and then systems spelled out plural. dot com. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks Scott. again. There. Take, Take care. care. Bye -bye. This is the Rude Awakening Show podcast.